this about uh, nine about nine million hectare uh, uh, we have uh, transplanted almond in wet season and we have also uh, borrowed dry season paddy and usually um, Bangladesh uh, farmers practices three to six inches deep of water in paddy fields and uh, about the methane emission from paddy rice fields uh, we have a little less figure than that of the IPCC for uh, because also Rainer asked a question about the figure uh, because of changes in uh, the paddy rice uh, uh, irrigated area uh, and our experts uh, estimated with uh, some new I mean real field data and we have got it uh, uh, 1.7 to 2.3 trillion uh, uh, um, giga, uh, gram per year, uh, but IPCC is uh, uh, telling a little uh, uh, higher than that of our uh, national uh, estimation. Uh, next please. Uh, okay. So, uh, in Bangladesh, uh, with uh, alternate wetting and drying, we have uh, another uh, method. We call it uh, drought, drought assessment model or climate mitigation crop model, you can say also. It has been uh, uh, with technical support also from the uh, IRRI and we have Bangladesh Agriculture Research Council. We have Bangladesh Agriculture uh, uh, research Institute and we have Rice Research Institute and another uh, organization we have uh, also a public trust uh, under the Ministry of Water Resources that Center for Environmental and Geographic Information Services. They have developed one model uh, how to reduce uh, water use uh, uh, for crop production. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, here is the, the how much water we can reduce uh, without uh, yield reduction and that has been tested uh, 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 in research areas and also that has been uh, uh, taken to the farmers field. Farmers are also engaged and it was found that about 35 percent uh, of uh, irrigation water can be saved and at the same time uh, the crop can be doubled from 3 to 4 ton to 7, 8 tons. So it is almost uh, like uh, alternate wetting and drying, but uh, it gives also irrigation uh, fertilizer and irrigation timing and, and dosing sort of thing. So this has also been adapted, and uh, you can see uh, uh, in the uh, on on the slide that uh, uh, we can upscale uh, uh, all over the country. So next, please. Okay, and then uh, uh, we have an extensive uh, alternate waiting drying pilot program in Bangladesh. Uh, 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 it is also with the technical support uh, from uh, International Rice Research Institute and uh, Bangladesh Agriculture Research Council, BARC, uh, coordinated uh, and brought uh, four major uh, in agencies in Bangladesh. One is the Department of Agriculture Extension. Is department is responsible mostly uh, to bring uh, new technologies uh, uh, to the farmers. So we have from the central to the village level uh, institutional setup of department of agriculture. Uh, and then Bangladesh Agriculture Development Corporation, they mostly give irrigation water, I mean uh, public irrigation water to the farmer and we have uh, another Bangladesh Rice Research Institute and Barind Multipurpose Development Authority. This Barind is a different type of area in Bangladesh. Uh, uh, it is uh, a very old uh, geographic or geologic uh, uh, arrangement. Uh, it is not uh, uh, plain land. Uh, it is a different type of land. It was earlier uh, there was a lot of water stress, but they have extensively used the uh, groundwater. So this uh, Barin Multipurpose Development Authority was also a part of this uh, three-year alternate wetting and drying program uh, in Bangladesh. 
So next please. So for, so this objective uh, was uh, to save irrigation water and uh, uh, we have found from our um, pilot study that about 1000 to uh, 100, 500 liter per kg of paddy water can be saved and also the estimates uh, of fuel cost was also reduced uh, um, from 20 to 30 US dollar per hectare and also it was a, uh, some evidences are there that it has also helped in crop production and uh, there are co-benefits like improved uh, environment and methane emission reduction, climate mitigation as also uh, Rainer will speak about the uh, initiative of climate and clean air coalition, there is agricultural initiative where in Bangladesh we be, is a lead partner with uh, Vietnam and Cam uh, Colombia. So there will be also climate uh, uh, mitigation co-benefit. Uh, so next please. So uh, now the activities under this AWD program for three years, uh, about uh, 1,632 farms uh, in uh, BRRI, BADCDA and BMDA uh, with an area of East Point Five Hector was uh, established, uh, exhibition farm and um, there were uh, 346 field days uh, at 83 centers of these organizations and there was also research at Bangladesh Rice Research Institute uh, uh, because of uh, there is a need of wheat control because of uh, this uh, drying of the uh, paddy field uh, help uh, some wheat growing and also fertilizer management and uh, application of uh, bead and granular uh, urea. Uh, recently Rainer came to Bangladesh and also uh, he presented on the deep, putting deep uh, the, uh, the fertilizer in Bangladesh that is also benefit. So on those things uh, there were also research at BRRI and also 330 basis of farmers and block supervisors of uh, the Department of Agricultural Extension where they got training and there was also from the top for uh, monitoring and evaluation and workshop. So next. Uh, so this uh, alternate waiting and drying program, pilot program in Bangladesh uh, covered almost uh, the whole country. Uh, and uh, BRRI, they have uh, head headquarter and also nine regional offices and Department of Agriculture Extension uh, covered about 25 districts, so which is almost uh, one fourth of the country, and also PADC. They have also institutional set up all over the country. Uh, so they have 25 seed production farms in 18 districts. They, it has been practiced, piloted in these BADC areas, also Bangladesh Metro, uh, uh, Multipurpose Barin Development Authority uh, have got 26 uh, zones, they have uh, applied these uh, alternate waiting and drying uh, activities in Bangladesh. So next. So from from this pilot uh, initiative uh, uh, in Bangladesh, uh, some uh, uh, I mean challenges we have found. That is, uh, uh, since the alternate wetting and drying uh, uh, needs some micro management and some smart management, uh, farmers uh, uh, are uh, reluctant uh, uh, to uh, get uh, water at the required time. So whether there will be a water supply or there will be uh, uh, I mean electricity uh, to uh, I mean uh, irrigate water in the technical field. So uh, farmers uh, see it uh, uh, as, as a constraint because in our uh, country uh, mostly the irrigation water being supplied uh, uh, by government I mean organization at the same time uh, irrigation water is supplied by the private parties. So there are irrigation managers, they manage groundwater and surface water by pumping 
so the farmer usually uh, take irrigation water for a season or sometimes for the whole year. So they pay a fixed amount of money for, for, a, for a crop or for a season or for the whole year. So uh, they do not mind uh, uh, of this, uh, I mean, flooded irrigation because uh, that is, as, I mean, uh, water supply uh, security is there. Uh, so, uh, uh, the second uh, point, bullet point, you can see also that uh, mostly there is a fixed rate and it is agreed before the season. So, uh, the benefit uh, uh, out of these AWD activities uh, is mostly uh, uh, to the, to the uh, irrigation manager. So, uh, we need to link uh, this, the farmer and also uh, the irrigation manager. Uh, uh, to get some incentive uh, from the saving of uh, irrigation energy, irrigation water and energy savings. So, uh, some uh, uh, times uh, we have uh, uh, some myron irrigation system organized in a group. So, decision making is open, dominated by the um, owners. Uh, and also weed uh, infestation is also another constraint. Uh, that has been identified during this three-year practice in uh, AWD in Bangladesh. Next, please. So, Bangladesh uh, uh, in uh, with FAO support uh, and UNDP support, we have identified uh, in 1987 or 88 uh, that Bangladesh has been classified into 30 agroecological regions and 84 sub-regions based on uh, physical environmental parameters like uh, uh, temperature, rainfall and also uh, physiography of uh, the country. Uh, so, the, these uh, agroecological regions has got different type of characteristics. So, next please. Uh, uh, for a uh, better management, uh, these uh, 30 agroecological regions has been clustered uh, into 11 agroecological zones and these are the zones you can see and we have some uh, exercise uh, uh, based on AWD suitability and we have found that uh, only uh, the hill agroecology uh, where uh, in the north in the in the in the eastern part of Bangladesh and in some part of the uh, north part of Bangladesh, this hill agroecology is not suitable for AWD, but you can see that all other 10 agroecological cluster agroecological zones are suitable for AWD practice. So, uh, so we can see that about 90 percent of the country is suitable for uh, AWD. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, we can have huge potential uh, to upscale the AWD practice in Bangladesh. Okay, next. And also, uh, we have some exercise on the climate smart agriculture, and you can see that uh, AWD is also uh, uh, is, uh, is for carbon smart, uh, energy smart, knowledge smart, and water smart agriculture. So, uh, AWD in our country, in Bangladesh, is suitable for rice during AUS. AUS means uh, pre monsoon. It is uh, in the month of uh, uh, April, May, June, uh, and also borrow season. It is uh, just after the, uh, it's a dry season, just after the uh, full moon season begins. So, AWD we can have uh, uh, in these two seasons. Okay, some problem, I think uh, I cannot see the screen. The screen. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Next, please. Next. Next, please. So, uh, uh, before thanking you that uh, uh, the, with this uh, AWD pilot uh, uh, experience in Bangladesh, uh, the uh, 
CCC initiative, uh, agricultural initiative, uh, Bangladesh is a lead partner and we hope that uh, Bangladesh will be able to upscale uh, alternate weighting and drying uh, uh, agricultural technology all over Bangladesh. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Sultan. Um, as I said at the beginning, if there are any questions, please uh, uh, use the question functionality or the chat functionality and send them to Danush Dinesh, and we'll take them at the end of uh, the next presentation. So I'm delighted to reintroduce Dr. Rainer Vassman, who is able to now join us and to begin his presentation on, um, on the AWD methodology. Rainer. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Sorry I had a technical problem here for some time, but hopefully now this, the, the connection will hold. Uh, I'm also seeing the slides a little bit with a delay, so uh, please excuse if I my talk. I'm still having here now the thank you very much slide from Sultan. So uh, now here we go. Okay, so the topic is um, mitigation potential in, in rice production. So you've heard the presentation from Sultan showing us the, uh, explaining us the, the country perspective. And so I now would like to give a bit more broader view on it. And I'm doing, have uh, worked on this presentation together with my course at Beyond All of Sander. Uh, we are from the International Rice Research Institute in the Philippines. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, I know of course what's coming, I don't see it here now. Rice has a, uh, yet, but uh, rice has a proportion of 1.5% of, uh, so okay, so my outline now first of all is the background rice as a source of greenhouse gases, then I will talk about possible option for mitigation in rice, zooming in to that option, what we consider the most promising one at this point, that is alternate wetting and drying, and then uh, finish with outlook and conclusion. Next slide, please. Yeah, rice is a proportion of 1.5 percent of the global emissions of all greenhouse gases. It doesn't sound very much, but uh, it, it is a very specific activity, and if you think of other activities that specific then you also come to relatively small proportions. Industry as a whole may be big, but if you bring it to one specific subsector, then it can, can also be small. And on the other, you have also plotted here now the, uh, the uh, contribution from agriculture without rice, that is 12 percent, and for forestry to give you some proportion how important rice is. And in fact, uh, it varies, of course, very much from country to country. Next, please. And so for some countries, especially in Southeast Asia, the emissions are very high. Can't really see it now, but oh yeah, now it's there. Uh, from Vietnam, you can see we have a percentage of 24.8%, and this data is taken from the second national communication of the respective country, in this case Vietnam. So it's really an official figure submitted by the government. The other one that you see in Bangladesh was somehow around 7 Point eight, and then it's Col Colombia as a third example. Just three examples to show you here the range that that the um, that the uh, um, uh, percentage of rice in in relation to the total can can take. But also these are the three these countries of our CCIC projects to which I'd come later. Next, please. Yeah. So what's the peculiar about rice? Well. Rice is the only crop that is, is flooded for longer periods of time. And so far the uh, soil is cut off from oxygen supply and there is anaerobic decomposition of, of organic matter which, which leads to the final product to, to methane. You can see here now also the different pathways. Methane can be emitted through the rice plant itself, forms of bubbles and forms of diffusion. Next please. So the emissions are somewhere around 500 to 500 kilograms methane per hectare and per season, and uh, 
You may know that methane has a global warming potential, which is ranged somewhere between 21 and 25, depending it on the, the uh, source, literature source that you have and also the time horizon. So that comes up somewhere in the range of, of 2 to 12 tons carbon dioxide equivalent per hectare per season. Next. The other greenhouse gas we have to consider is nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide is uh, also emitted from from, emitted from from any any crop that is fertilized and so in he, so far here we have the nitrous oxide emission also to, to take into account from fertilizer application. Next please. Something seems to be holding up a little bit now. Not so sure why. Okay, so we're working on this, on emissions since a long time. At Erie, we started in 1991 and we had several projects throughout the 90s and then again now since 2006 uh, that are using also a fairly advanced uh, automated system with which in which we can record the methane emissions 24-7 uh, essentially. So we can really record all the diurnal pattern, seasonal pattern, and so forth. We also had international networks, as you can see at the bottom. Next, please. Yeah, I'm not, not, not sure how long it takes for you to build up. Maybe you can click already the next one and I'm going to, to finish finish at that time, yeah? Maybe just, just click next and I'm going to talk about that. It's relatively fast, fast that if you don't lose too much time with, with always waiting. So we do a lot of capacity building. You can see it here. We have uh, also now, uh, we are quite often using much more simple methods as we have shown before manual sampling, which has uh, the advantage of being very flexible. So a lot of our uh, collaborators in different countries in Southeast Asia are, are doing that. We also have established labs to actually measure uh, the emissions from methane as well as from, from nit nitrous, nitrous oxide. Next. That is also coming. Okay, possible next possible options to for mitigation uh, for mitigation in rice now well uh, in the 90s already as I said we have done a lot of measurements uh, including in China and in China there is a an irrigation pr uh, practice that is called mid-season drainage you can see that here as compared to as continuous flooding the mid-season drainage entails well as the name already says um, a certain period in the middle of the season where there is no standing water. And you can see the methane emissions here, that there are really quite some differences. Initially we get a, a peak after the drainage, which can be explained by the methane that is entrapped in the soil. And then the emissions are much lower throughout the, the, the remaining season. Next please. Yeah, and, and this, this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, finding brought us to the idea, well, maybe you, we can really reduce emissions to um, through, through the water management and maybe even having more than just one drainage period. That was already there in, the idea was already there in, in, the, in the 90s. However, at the same time there were groups in Erie and also at uh, other institutions or groups of water scientists that developed techniques how to reduce irrigation water consumption. And the technique that evolved from that was called alternate wetting and drying. And in a way it brings the idea of the mid-season drainage to another level because there are several periods where the rice field is essentially non-flooded. You can see it's a very simple tool to record, 
to, to determine that there still is water in the in, in the in the soil so that the plant does not really suffer any drought stress and and for, for that we can assure that there is no um, no no damage from 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 drought, drought stress as long the farmer just makes sure that that the water level doesn't go below below a certain threshold and typically we say 15 centimeters as the threshold next slide please Again, this kind of technique has been evolved, uh, developed by water science, by water science groups who were concerned about water saving. Only I have really a problem now. Okay, let, let me just just see. I hope I can get back now. Okay, can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay, I just just assume that that, that you can. Um, yeah. So we have we've done now now also. Uh, measurements on the emissions from this this uh, AWD, and it turned out that we can really reduce emissions. Next, please. So here's one one uh, example from Central Vietnam, where the emissions have been have been uh, recorded in different different places along the uh, topographic uh, sequence, and uh, you can see that here in in this these these results where we can compare the the, uh, the results from, from field measurements in these two, two sites with continuous flooding against uh, AWD. The AWD uh, as has, has low emission rates throughout all the season and we find that in many different places the percentages of, of reduction vary. Here in this case it was a tune of, of 30 percent. In other cases we can even go, go lower. Next please. Okay, talking about Vietnam, I now am in Vietnam, by the way. Uh, this has really, the results have, have really also had some impact already at the policy level. Uh, Vietnam has a, a the, the Vietnamese um, Prime Minister has issued a decree that is called 202020, which aims to reduce the emissions by the year, by 20% by the year 2020. Uh, this is now has been picked up by the Ministry of, of Agriculture, which uh, mentions AWD as one of the mitigation options. Next, please. And now it's really turned on from the national level also to the provincial level to to implement it. I just uh, am here now with an eerie mission, so we are going through several regions in, in Vietnam and uh, try to assist also our our uh, Vietnamese partners in uh, what they call the restructuring of the rice uh, sector, so much broader than only just, just the mitigation, but nevertheless the issue of mitigation always comes up. Next please. Because the, the provincial governments are now tasked to implement AWD and still have uh, insufficient knowledge to, to do that. But nevertheless, so this is just one example. Next, uh, if, if we can, can see that now from one province in uh, in central Vietnam, the one that I, I just showed, where AWD is mentioned, and it's, it is that farmers are encouraged to really use use the uh, the AWD tech technology and also um, to reduce emission, but also to in increase rice productivity. Next, please. Yeah, as I said, water is one of the key factors. The other other factor to be considered is uh, the fertilizer application. Typically, rice fields are very small in Asia. Uh, here in North Vietnam, the the uh, many fields are, are only one a uh, zero point one hectare. So farmers really have very small areas here. In South Vietnam, it's it's a bit bit bigger. But nevertheless, they are very uh, very small fields, and they they can can really also ver differ from from each other. So it is really important to provide farmer with with the tailored fertilizer application recommendation. Next already, so these 
rec recommendation should should be on the correct timing, the correct amount, the sources, and 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 uh, are for 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 the farmers. And uh, the way how we are doing that is now more and more through mobile phone applications. Originally, we developed uh, these kind of decision support tools for uh, no. Can, can go, go go to the next slide, please. Uh, with mo mobile phone applications, uh, originally we developed as those for as, as, as CD distributed CD-ROMs for computers. But it turns out that it's much much easier and much more popular also for farmers to, to use mobile phone applications. So we get some site-specific information from the farmer or an operator who could also be an extension service agent, and then we provide recommendations. That is already existing for nutrients, weeds, and irrigation. Next, please. But now we have expanded this, and uh, we have added new modules that deal with greenhouse gas uh, emissions, as well also with, uh, with climate based information with, with uh, climate adjusted year targets and we call that now the climate informed rice crop and low emission manager or circle and we have an, uh, a project here at um, uh, in, in Vietnam funded by CCUFS by, by one of the the, uh, uh, the uh, consortium programs of the CGIAR and uh, where we really try to, to introduce these this, this new mod modules into the mobile phone app. Next please. Yeah, next please. So now I'm going to talk about the suitability assessment for alternate wetting and drying. As I said, we consider that the most promising option at the, at this point. And uh, probably also if you take into account other crops than rice, uh, it will be hard to find something that has been tested in so many different different experiments and so many different situations and always have can come up as, as a very solid uh, approach to reduce emissions. So I am going to talk now about our projects in the Philippines, in Central Luzon, the main island. So it's uh, north of, of, of Manila. And uh, we have, next please, and we have different sites there in different provinces, in Tarlac, in uh, the province of Nueva Ecija, which is the largest rice producing province in the Philippines, and then in Bulacan, two sites. And that actually, so it hopefully should show up next now um, very soon. That is in the area on the area in, near in, at the dam that provides uh, drinking water to Manila. And as you can see here, there are, there are two graphs that uh, that, that show the the uh, water behind the dam uh, that is that is uh, available for agricultural use and for non-agricultural use. And you can really see see, see the trend that of course non are to use meaning Manila as a, as, as a, as a consumer, consumer for, for drinking water will need, needs more and more and this trend is, is actually going on uh, so uh, there is and it definitely won't won't reverse so in uh, we really have problems in, in in the irrigation scheme down the dam in the so-called um, I'm not irrigation or I'm, I'm risk, especially in, in El Nino years, in, in very dry years. You can see here the extreme case of the El Nino year, 97, 98, but we are heading for another El Nino, so uh, it's very likely that next year we will have problems again. Um, next, please. Yeah, and we have measured the uh, the emissions in in these at at these these diff different sites. But I think oh yeah, I have one 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 earlier. Sorry. So okay, uh, we wanted to find out the suitability for the AWD suitability, and there there are basically two points to to, con to consider here. A lot of smaller things, but they can some be summarized into two major aspects. One is the climatic suitability. And the climatic suitability is nothing else than the water balance. So uh, we have incoming water from the rainfall, and then we have losses in terms of evapotranspiration, and then the sea patch, which goes goes horizontally, and the per, uh, percolation, which goes down. And next, next, please. So in essence, we're having here a kind of a balance between the incoming, as I said, rainfall versus versus uh, potential evapotranspiration and potential sea patch and percolation. So if in 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 the rainy season we have Plenty of, 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 of rainfall. There is really no 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 reason to 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 add something to irrigation, for example. But on the other hand, uh, 
uh, it, it may even be very difficult, even if you wanted to do AWD, to implement it. In the dry season, these, this, uh, there is a deficit, there is not enough, enough rainfall, and the irrigation is added uh, to, 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 uh, to, to compensate for, for, for the deficit. And so far, there is also a possibility, in most cases in a dry season, to, to, uh, to apply this AWD. Next. Thank you. That's next one. Uh, yeah. Next, yeah. Uh, so we have we have done that now for, for for the entire Philippines. This this kind of climatic suitability in a GIS assessment and showing that for those those sites that that we have been working in, uh, how how it will look like um, would be in the next slide. Then uh, you can see that uh, I, I assume that most of, of you see that already. Uh, but what, what the finding was of the GIS an analysis, as we somehow expected, of course, that in the wet season, the suitability is low in most cases in, in central Luzon because there is a lot of rain, rainfall, but still there are some pockets in, in this, 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 this area where, where it, it would still be, be moderate, uh, uh, moderately suitable. And uh, whereas in the dry season, uh, the suitability is is, is high, so it, it, it's really uh, possible to apply that in this part. I have to say this sounds a bit trivial, saying that the wet season is, is low and the dry season is high. It is, of course, in, in the Philippines, there are also other areas where there is a bit more, more mixed, where these, these seasons are not so pronounced. And we, we are really doing that now for, for a wider range of, of, of countries. We really try to see where it really makes sense to go and, and to, to, to do the uh, the uh, uh, this AWD and where it, it may may be not not a very very wise idea, idea to do it. Next slide, please. So so far, it, uh, the and for other regions in the Philippines, also for other countries, the whole situation is a bit more complex. Sometimes even what is called the wet season doesn't yield so much rain, whereas sometimes also the what is called the dry season is where it, it still it still has some some substantial rainfall. So hopefully the next will come up that I can continue this now. And so we have then also done the emission in these in this side that I've shown in central Luzon. And uh, then that brings me to the next really uh, criteria, important criteria for the AWD suitability, and that is the irrigation specifics or the irrigation infrastructure. Uh, so some of the farmers in, 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 in these areas, or you can also say it all over Asia, uh, Sultan has, has mentioned that are basically getting the irrigation water through pumps. Uh, in the Philippines, there are uh, farmers associations in some cases that have these pumps. And in those cases, they are very interested to really re re reduce the fuel consumption, meaning that they have less pumping hours. And by that also, they are very interested to in optimize the, the um, optimize the use of water so we don't need need to have, have to convince them a lot maybe you can, you can click already to the next one uh, and I, I continue with with, with the explaining this the, the rain of slide in other very similar is the situation when we have a pump a big pump by an irrigation authority also there uh, is a strong interest by the farmer and of course also by the irrigation authority to 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 uh, really to optimize water use and and uh, uh, AWD is really picked up uh, with, with uh, quite uh, is regarded quite positively there. Um, in some cases, uh, when, when when the people when when the farmers get get the um, get get their water from a canal, it is much more complicated. So this basically means that they will get the water driven by gravity, and so the interest to to reduce emissions is much 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 less less pronounced. Uh, in some cases, the um, irrigation authority uh, provides a certain pattern of of of, uh, of uh, supplying uh, water, irrigation water, to some places in some week, and the next week to into another week. So they can they could can even impose AWD because the farmer don't only get water in, in one week, and that works actually quite well when when there are new irrigation schemes in the Philippines. There are some examples where through that they, they can really basically impose AWD and and so the uptake is is, is really relatively is, is, is very, very very good in that uh, for those farmers that um, have the choice to irrigate or not irrigate and whether water is 
is, is present in the canal, it really depends very much on, on the motivation of, of them. Some do it, some, some, some are really are, are, are reluctant to do it. In a nutshell, as you can see here, we have some motivated farmers, that is B2, and again the B2 was a site with, within this, this area where, where the water is, is, is given to, to, to Manila. So uh, even if, if the, the farmers in this specific season may have not suffered a, a really water shortage, they are fully aware that it doesn't make sense to, to, to waste the irrigation water. It can really, that irrigation water is a very precious is good for them and, and so we really have also of course worked with farmers and, and were able to motivate some of them to really apply it whereas very frankly we really have to say there are also many examples and uh, Sultan has also also mentioned mentioned it where it's really very difficult to, to motivate the farm farmers really to, to, to do to apply this, this type of, of techniques for a variety of reasons next slide please uh, because Mainly, they don't really have an incentive. Uh, they also in the Philippines as well as in Vietnam, they they pay flat rates, meaning they pay per hectare per season, and in so far the the actual actual uh, water savings will not not be really credited to to, to them. So in so far, the the incentive uh, is is relatively relatively low. Next, please. This takes some time again to build up here. Um, Yes. Yeah. So, in we really have a have a mixed mixed uh, mixed picture. I'm just just uh, still seeing the other other the, the old old slide here. Uh, we really have have a mixed mixed picture. Now 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 we we I, I'm seeing seeing the other one. And we have really been in, introducing AWD, of course, always with 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 the uh, with the uh, mantra that that we are not really um, that it won't won't reduce the the uh, the yield. And uh, we have following some guidelines that have been developed for for variety selection. You know, there are many different varieties of rice, and uh, and so our colleagues who are working on plant plant breeding and and the dissemination of these varieties have really uh, done a lot of participatory approaches, uh, and we are basically following that. Next slide, please. So that we really also try to get the response from farmers, uh, try to really see how how they they see it, and then. To what extent they are willing to also to do it in in the long run? Because uh, we have, of course, also examples for technologies that they have been taught uh, in one season, and the farmers did apply it maybe for one year and then shifted to to others. So we really try to see that a bit more the systematic approach, and we also developed uh, uh, monitoring tools to do it. Okay, so what are the lessons learned in these in these case studies? Um, uh, one is really that we should stress the co-benefits of AWD uh, and not only the, the water saving and in, in some cases even the, 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 the and, and of course not, not the, the emission savings because that doesn't really uh, bring any benefit to, to the farmers as such. But we really have a number of issues there, a number of, of cases where there, is a, there are some advantages, there is a stronger lodging resistance, meaning that the, that the, the rice, the rice uh, uh, plants don't 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 tilt into to the water at, at, at a strong strong rainfall. Uh, there are also negative sides uh, for in terms of there could could at least be negative sides in terms of, uh, of of weeds and and things like this. But we are really working on that to to see that uh, to to bring AWD in a in a in a kind of package. In technology package that, that can really brought to farmers and also saying okay yeah but this with the, this and this approach you, you can then really uh, not only save water you can also in, increase the yield. Um, we have made good experience in focusing at the farmers at the tail end of the canals who are really suffering from uh, from from water shortage in many cases and I'm sure that is also another in in, in, in in this area where we are working in the central Philippines but I'm sure it's also in other places uh, the the at, at the tail end the farmers don't get get enough enough water so they have a strong interest to optimize it and that can also be be uh, uh, as a showcase for the feasibility. Um, AWD is is one option. It should not be seen as the only one. There are also certain transitions from uh, from the other extreme from a uh, from an, uh, a full irrigation from from continuous irrigation to AWD. For example, a single drainage or dual drainage. So we should be more creative, I think, in terms of offering different 
different uh, uh, irrigation options. Uh, very important, but that's not only for, for AWD, also for, for others, is the tech, uh, is to find local champion. Maybe you can click already on the on the on the for, for the next slide. Um, and uh, yeah, and definitely here for irrigation, it's very important to include the irrigation authorities right from the start of, of, of the project. Initially, we thought, okay, what, what we can do with AWD is, is just to assist farmers in carbon crediting. Next, please, yeah. But uh, however, it hasn't really worked out that way. Uh, uh, as you may know that the idea of, of, of a carbon market uh, essentially collapsed over the last uh, two years. Uh, the, the carbon prices have been going down. Uh, it remains to be seen whether this will come back and the uh, of course there are some hopes for the COP in, in Paris next next year that the, that the also the carbon prices and the carbon markets may, may get revitalized. At the moment uh, it is really very uh, difficult to, to really uh, to, to do uh, a CDM project, but nevertheless, we have uh, worked on a small-scale methodology which has been approved by UNFCCC. It has been revised even then in 2012 to make it a bit, bit easier now, and that specific that is uh, called the methane emission reduction by adjusted water management in rice. Next slide, please. So, um, yeah, and and that is uh, uh, it's, it's really something that that it has been. Uh, uh, um, yeah, to, to at least to to have the uh, the possibility for farmers to to do that. However, it has not happened yet. Uh, the reasons for for that are definitely also because this is it is rather uh, complicated to do it. You can see here now in that slide how how complex actually the whole procedure is to to, to arrive as common credit. I don't want to go to the individual steps. This is the purpose of this slide is just to show how complex it is. Next, please. And uh, the other thing is that with the current uh, carbon prices, it is uh, hardly worth to, to do it. I'm seeing here a problem again. Sorry, I can only talk now. I, at the moment, I can't see anything here. Uh, it's hardly worth to, to see it again. The next slide, and I hope you can you can you can see that now, is basically for uh, for um, uh, the. Uh, basically, to, to show that, that with, with these current prices, it, it's uh, yeah. Now I have it now here. Uh, with these current prices, it's hardly worth even for, for poor farmers. So we are not talking here about anything that, that has, has to do anything with with, with poverty alleviation. Uh, it, it's really not 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 worth doing that. But again, maybe that would change uh, uh, in, in a few years' time. Uh, next slide, please. We, put, we think that uh, the um, prospects of bringing AWD to farmers is bigger when we are uh, really trying to uh, team up with other efforts to bring better technology to farmers. Uh, for example, there are approaches for uh, establishing good agriculture practice guidelines in different countries. Here's an example from Vietnam. Next slide, if you can put the next already. Uh, that is called One Must Do Five Reductions. One Must Do is, uh, is certified seeds, and five reductions is, is, is less, uh, less fertilizer and also less, less, um, less, less water and less pesticides and, and so on. And we really feel that we, that's also why I'm here the moment in Vietnam and I talked just over these days with, with a lot of people about that. Uh, if we really try try to see this AWD as part of this uh, this these campaigns and, and it, this it is one of the five reductions and try to push more for, for a broader adoption of, of, of these good agriculture agricultural practice guidelines, then our chances are better than, than just focusing on the campaign on AWD alone. Uh, in the Philippines it's a bit more 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 uh, we have a sophisticated approach, they call it the Pala check, which is a bit like a decision support system. Next slide, please. But that is really sort of our, that these are really the, the ones that we consider our, nation, nation, our natural allies to bring, bring AWD to farmers. Yeah, the next one, uh, probably that's only now to come to the outlook and conclusion. Next one, please. Uh, we have a new project. 
funded by the CCAC, the Climate and Clean Air Alliance. Can we just get the next slide now? And uh, yeah, I do not really have to, have to wait until it shows up here. The Climate and Clean Air Coalition, sorry, and uh, that project is called Mitigation Option to Reduce Methane Emissions in Petty Rice. What is the CCAC? It's a relatively new organization with partnerships of governments, intergovernmental organizations, <coughs> and private sector. Uh, the mission is to fight global warming and to improve human health. The focus is on short-lived climate polluting, meaning <coughs> non-carbon dioxide, um, greenhouse gases, and uh, in, in our case, and it operates on the unit. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so the uh, CCAC has uh, several components, and uh, the newest one of these components. So taking this, preempting that a bit because it still takes some time to build up here. The newest one is 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 actually uh, uh, the the agriculture component, and uh, the agriculture component has has uh, three three projects, and uh, and and one is is on rice. Not have, so you can see it here. Okay, next slide, please. So you can see it's a very, very new pro uh, um, project. Uh, it's a new component within the agriculture as a component, the petty rice production, and we will have a big launch of of of, of this 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 component in Bangkok uh, end of next month on 31st of of October. Uh, the overall objective of our component is to develop roadmaps for implement, implementing replicable and scalable mitigation option focusing on AWD in three countries. So it's Vietnam set as an example with a very high percentage of, of uh, emissions coming from, from, from rice field. Bangladesh somehow in the middle, uh, in the middle still quite substantial, though not by, by no means as high as for Vietnam, and then Colombia with a smaller proportion. Next. Please. Yes, still waiting. Um, probably the next will be the objectives. Uh, threefold. We want to. Uh, generate improved information platforms because we realize here that in many cases it is just a kind of information deficit that people uh, that also the policymaker for example at provincial level are simply not informed about about AWD and how to do it uh, then we want to establish national networks uh, or for a horizontal information flow enhance capacities and plans and then we will do that through the, some pilot studies in areas where there is already AWD experience uh, for extracting some lessons learned. Uh, so Dan has, has, has mentioned some projects in Bangladesh. Similar thing here in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Going in, into those those regions. Uh, what, what are we the lessons? And then of course also in Colombia there is nothing yet, but at, at least we also want to also have the information platforms. And, and the national networks, and hopefully we can also trigger some some areas there where, where, where AWD will be implemented. Next, please. If I'm not mistaken, now that is for the for my conclusion. I have two conclusions basically. Uh, each of them has two parts. Uh, the conclusion for us is very clear that we are really talking a lot here to policymakers in Asia, and they are getting very, very much interested now in that topic, in, in mitigation uh, from rice, and they really want to include that into develop development targets. I have to say that was not always the case in the 90s. We felt that there was not that much interest, but that the situation has really changed now. Next, however. What kind of information can we really, really uh, supply to them? And I, we really feel that uh, 
we have to be more specific and, and we have to be more specific targeting different stakeholders. So it's a very different question. The type of information is, is very different. At the provincial level, they want really spatial, they want maps for their province. Uh, where are the priorities? Where should they start to implement it? Whereas uh, in a broader scale, if, if you think about the national scale, there will be other, there will be more uh, information in, in terms of, of guidelines that can be, can be distributed or decision support. Next, please. This is now the last slide. Again, the, con the conclusion, which will be followed by a but, scientific findings and publication will not be sufficient as such. That was very clear to stimulate the mitigation. We really have to get, come uh, with, with more, uh, have to translate that into spatial and temporal priorities uh, at different scales. Thanks. So this this was my presentation. Can you click one more? There's just a, the, the final slide with a thank you. And I'm happy to answer questions if there are. Thank you very much, uh, Ryder. Um, yes. So in the few minutes that remain before the the end of our um, webinar. We have a couple of questions which I, I think I'm going to address to Reiner. The first is from, uh, or they're both from Michael Colby. And the question is, have there been any experiments that combine AWD with deep fertilizer placement so that you could mitigate nitrogen emissions at the same time? And Michael has the point of view that he understands that AWD may actually increase nitrogen emissions whilst reducing methane. Right, okay. Can you uh, that? I have seen the experiment just a few weeks ago. Oh yeah, I, I can respond to that. Can you hear me? Yeah, good. Okay, yes. Uh, are there experiments? Yes, go ahead. yes I. Yes, can Can you hear me? Okay, I I assume you can hear me. So just just continue. Uh, there are uh, experiments in Bangladesh, to be more precise. There is a big project in Bangladesh on the deplacement of fertilizer and uh, they have uh, uh, used uh, and I have I've seen the um, the ex experiment in Ghazipur uh, just just a few weeks ago and and there they are measuring the uh, uh, deep fertilizer placement which really in, it reduces nitrous oxide emissions uh, also in combination with AWD the other question is, of course, something that uh, yeah that comes up uh, uh, quite often: the interaction of uh, of uh, AWD and nitrous oxide emission. There are some reports in the literature that do really uh, uh, that have recorded much higher emissions from uh, of nitrous oxide. However, I have to say uh, the vast majority of uh, of measurements, and my co-author. Ole Zander has done a, a very comprehensive literature study on, on that, really show that the increment in N2O emissions is really very small as long as we also ha have, uh, have adjusted our, fertil our nitrogen emissions, uh, nitrogen fertilization, sorry. Uh, if, if that is uh, somehow in a reasonable uh, amount, if it's not over fertilized, then we find a relatively small increment in nitrous oxide, nitrous oxide emission that does not compensate for the big savings that we're getting. Yeah, okay. That's a Thank you very much. The, 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 the final question, which again I'm going to address to Reiner, and again from Michael Colby. What are the differences between AWD and SRI? Okay, SRI, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, not sure if everyone is familiar with that, that is system of rice intensification. And uh, that has been developed originally in Madagascar. It has been taken up by uh, Norman Oppo from, from Cornell University. And uh, SRI has a, 
has a range of, of, of uh, measures. It, it starts already from the seedling stage, what farmers should, should do. It also goes, at, in, a, in the original version at, at least, it was also talking about fertilizer. And it also includes a specific water regime, which resembles very much AWD. So in other words, uh, uh, there are clearly uh, uh, common areas in that where we, where we can see the SRI Although I have to say SRI can, can mean, uh, in the meantime, very different things to different people. And we see many field experiments where, uh, where there is a, is a very, uh, not, not going to say a very specific way of, of, of in interpreting the ideas of SRI. But the original form of SRI, SRI has, in, includes an, uh, a water management which, is, uh, which ex essentially corresponds to AWD. Okay. Um, fine. And, a, and a final question now from, from Daniel Backman. Ryder, right, you said that the carbon market is, is not now uh, you know, worth to participate in at the moment, but that mostly relates only to the clean development mechanism market. And uh, Daniel's question is, have you thought about collaborating with schemes from the voluntary market, which still can reach higher price payments for certificates? The specific example he's quoting is the gold standard credits. And, in, and indeed, it, the gold standard has just launched its own water program, which quantifies water improvement savings and certifies them in the form of credits that can be traded. Is that something that would be interest in terms of creating a further incentive for farmers to want to carry out AWD? Thank, thanks for, 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 for this, for this comment. Uh, I mean, we are, as, as I said, I, I don't want to write off the idea of carbon market altogether. I mean, I have my reservation whether this will become something that will become will be, be in all, uh, widespread uh, application in, in farmers practice but nevertheless of course if, if there are new opportunities arising then 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 yes uh, I personally know I've been involved in uh, the voluntary market in uh, also guidelines in in the US and uh, they have uh, also a, a methodology that uh, is um, that that was actually the California Rice uh, Rice Association or, or Rice Rice Chamber, whatever the name was, that has initiated that, and uh, and that is based on a modeling approach. So basically, the the uh, the emission savings will be modeled based on 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 some some inputs coming coming from from farmers. Uh, I, I recognize that there is a lot of development in that. Uh, these, uh, the way I understood it, the voluntary market in that case uh, was actually limited to the U.S. Maybe there are other uh, markets. We, uh, I, I have heard from many people that also China is looking into that direction. Uh, they have something I think they call the Panda standard. Uh, yes, we are very open to to any any uh, development and. Uh, and besides, we are not the ones to trade the carbon. Uh, we just want to explore the situation, to what extent farmers or farmer association or maybe also some governmental institution like irrigation authorities could actually contribute on that. And whatever will, will evolve there, we will certainly uh, monitor to what extent there, there are new opportunities, yes. That's it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, in the interest of time, we're, we're now over our allotted time. There were some more questions, so thank you to those people that have written in questions. What we will do is we will take those offline and we will get a response to you sent uh, d directly. Um, but unfortunately, we're now out of time in our, in our allotted time for this webinar. So I want to first of all thank all the attendees for attending. Um, for what for me at least was a very, very interesting discussion and a really interesting opportunity uh, to address uh, an important area of greenhouse gas um, uh, mitigation. Um, and on, on your behalf, I would like to thank our two speakers, Dr. Rhino Wassman and Dr. Sulman Ahmed, for taking the time to share the work that's going on in this very important area. Um, so thank you, everybody, for, for coming along. I, I do hope you found it as interesting and as informative as I did. Um, and uh, I wish you all the best, and, uh, and thank you for joining. Thank you very much. Okay.
Also, thank you from my side to all participants. I hope uh, that was uh, somehow interesting to, to you. And uh, I, yeah, and, and sorry that that I had this technical problem, but but uh, eventually I think it worked reasonably well from the technical side. Thank so you very thank much. you very much. Thank you very much from my side also. Uh, it was very interesting, and I hope that uh, Bangladesh will also upscale this AWDB under. AWD under CCAC initiative and also other initiatives. Thank you very much for listening and the opportunity. Thank you everybody and, and that's the end of our webinar. Thank you.